Alright guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to get a Ridison in this game, how to prepare yourself for that and be the best player that you can possibly be so that it should be easy for every single person. And I am going to start off with somebody who is like really bad at the game and work my way up through that because I want this video to be centered towards people who haven't played since like last Rebirth and they don't, they don't really know um, things that are up to speed and some people who are just like not great at the game like they're really trying to get better but they don't have all the information to get better and they don't know what to practice what habits to develop and things like that so i'm going to make this video um super basic so that every single player can understand um the concepts and how to actually improve in this game all right so with that being said it is going to be a very long video because i want to make sure i get every single thing um intact and on top of that too if you guys don't watch any of my other videos on the channel, if this is the only video that you ever watch of mine, I at least want it to have all the information, like the most basic information that I would be able to give you so that you can really improve and get really good in this game. So if you don't watch any video, this is the video that's really going to help you improve because it's going to cover almost every single thing that I say um, to, to make you a lot better player in this game. All right, and that's going to be just like basic fundamentals, the mindset you should have, certain equipment you should have but if you guys never watched me in your entire life and you have no idea who i am um i have hit iridescent last season so it was it was pretty easy like i hit it well within two weeks i just had a set squad knew exactly what to do have hit crimson and haven't been playing that much because i've been dropping i've dropped 440 bombs on regular resurgence i dropped 49 yesterday posted a video about that too so you know i am qualified to talk about all of this stuff and i am an amazing player all right so i'm gonna help you guys out so before we start anything, I am going to go through the equipment to make sure you guys have like the best equipment possible because if you're playing on like PS4 or you have a console and not even a monitor, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage towards people who have good equipment and it can make them a lot better at this game. All right, so um, PC is number one. If you have a PC, you're already at a huge advantage over other people. All right, so make sure you have a PC to get the best advantage possible of hitting uh, iridescent. If you don't have that PS5, you can still hit it on there really well because it's almost the same exact delay now, now that they upgraded it, now that they have 120 FOV, which they didn't have in the last rebirth. So if you have a PS5, you're fine, but if you have anything lower than that, like a PS4 or Xbox One, if they still have Warzone on that, then you're at a huge disadvantage. So before you even think about your Descent, you gotta you gotta upgrade your equipment. Alright, but I play on PC. Um and monitor, so it's probably not even worth the grind if you're if you're trying to hit your iridescent and you're playing on a, a, a 60 inch tv so get yourself a nice monitor 120 hertz or higher minus 240 uh, and that is like the two things that you need like off the bat to make sure you're good at this game also play on a wired controller because i've tested this out playing on a wired controller is a direct connection that makes you have a lot faster input in this game whether you're playing console pc anything like that so direct connection wired for the controller, I play on a PS5. Anything that's like newer gen, so like PS5, PS4 is good, but I heard it has like a little bit of uh, delay, but you can overclock that as well. So any controller that's overclockable, that is gonna be able to make sure that you are super fast in this game. You can really um, hit a lot of shots. But if you are on PS5, you can't overclock your controller, but it's still good enough delay to be extremely good at this game. So if you are on PC, I do use this thing called time resolution. I'm gonna put a link in that in the description below. But pretty much this reduces the the default timer that you have in your computer, making you react a lot faster. So if you don't have this because you're on console, then that's unfortunate. Uh, but this does make you react faster in this game. It's a form of overclocking. And then the other one, HID USB. This is the one Shotzi showed, showed in a video to show you how to overclock your controller. So this is how I overclock my controller right here. Uh, overclock the resolution right here. Being that I'm overclocking both, like... This is just for safety precautions in case I have any single delay that I don't know. If you overclock the controller and then you might not need to overclock the resolution, but I just do that as a safety precaution. So those are the only two programs that I use to actually make sure everything is running perfectly. I don't overclock my PC at all. And then obviously, you know, have headphones or something to hear. The audio, you don't want to be playing on a TV that has audio coming from the TV because you can't hear footsteps that good. So that's like everything as far as the equipment side to make sure that you're set in this game. Um, and as long as you have like most of those things or all those things down, then you should be ready to at least get into the settings portion.
So here I'm going to go through all the settings that are extremely important and just explain like the important things about each setting so that you guys have this down. First, I'm going to get into the button layout. So this is extremely important right here. Most people do not play default if they're extremely good at the game. So me, I play bumper jumper tactical flipped. People play stick and move. They can play default with paddles that all of that is totally amazing, but you don't want to play default, right? You don't want to play default. Uh, the main reason why I say don't play default is because you have to jump and crouch and they're right next to each other. All right. So your hands are going to be super close to each other, your fingers, and that can mess you up because you're doing everything with one hand. Now for me, I play on bumper jumper tactical flipped and you guys might have to get used to this or something else that spreads your fingers apart and make sure they press different buttons. All right. So for here, I jump with L2. I crouch with the right stick and those are two different hands that I'm using, right? Those are two different hands. So if I'm like slide canceling, slide jump, I have way more space to actually do more movement and that's going to set me up in the future to get a lot of kills like that. All right. So that setting is extremely important for that. Make sure you have a good button layout that separates your hands so that you're not having, you know, super close uh, fingers so that it can mess you up right there so that make sure you have your button lay layout set and if you never switched it ever in your life try different ones to make sure that it's comfortable and you can press different buttons at the same time without really messing up all right flipped if you don't have trigger stops play flipped i'm making it mandatory you have to play flipped mainly because the triggers they react slower than the bumpers all right i still don't want to get trigger stops i'd rather just use the bumpers it's super fast right there but if i aim and shoot with l1 and r1 it makes it super fast to be able to hit my shots and shoot faster than my opponent so make sure that you guys play flipped if you do not have trigger stops next i want to talk about the dead zones uh so for the dead zone left stick minimum left stick max we're going to keep that super low for fast strafe speed some people like to play higher maybe like 30 or 65 some people have it all the way up but the lower you put it the faster you are going to be for speed and if you put it higher you will get more rotational aim assist that's why it could be like a little bit personal preference but i recommend just going super low for that you don't want to have that maxed out right stick minimum put that as low as possible as long as you don't get stick drift that's going to increase your reaction speed and make you a lot better at this game Right stick max, keep it at 99 or 100. I like 100 because the higher you have it, the more you can hit precise shots from there. And then the triggers, you just keep super low. It doesn't matter. Just put it like super low so that you can be able to. I used to jump fast, right? So L2, I'm able to jump super fast. It doesn't affect my bumpers at all. Now, sensitivity, very controversial, but in rank we're we're talking about getting better at resurgence rank right you guys need to make sure that you are focusing on hitting your shots rather than you know doing a lot of crazy 360 movements or anything like that right so i play on 3-3 three, three. um if you play like six or lower that's really good because you can really focus on your shots if you're playing seven or eight and you're still not hitting every single bullet because the goal is to hit every single bullet on the enemy you got to lower that so what i would do is go all the way down to one and then i would make sure that i'm able to shoot really good you know shoot really good on one okay that's i'm shooting really good i'm gonna move it up to two shooting really good boom boom and i would slowly move it up until you can't hit every single bullet right so if i put this on five it's on five and like I'm, I'm hitting most of my shots, but I'm not hitting every single shot. Then you do want to change your sensitivity and put it a lot lower. All right. So make sure that you have it to where you hit every single bullet on the enemy. All right. Make sure it's like that. You don't want to have insane speed in this game as far as looking around because that's going to mess you up when you're versing really good players to get into Erie. All right. ADS sense. Keep it around one. You could go a little bit lower. I wouldn't go higher, but keep it around one. I always play at one. Uh, aim response curve type. Linear or dynamic. Nobody really uses standard. Um, I do recommend if you do use dynamic to put it on 0.00 because the lower you have it, the faster you will be able to react in this game. And I would say with these two, linear makes you more instant because it's like closer to a one-to-one -one ratio. And what that pretty much means is your movement and your aim is going to be more raw so it's going to be more you controlling it where dynamic is better for like aim assist and that's going to lock on a little bit easier with controller so it's a lot easier to aim on dynamic but linear is like if you really want to tune down your aim and be super fast highly suggest linear 
And linear is also really good for recoil control. So I would say play on linear, but if you do want to play on dynamic, it does give you really good aim assist as well. So those two. All right, so for ADS transition, ADS sensitivity transition timing, a lot of people never touch this at all. They just always keep it at instant, which is the default. I play gradual and highly recommend gradual because you actually have two different sensitivities. You have your hip fire sensitivity and then your ADS sensitivity, which is like fast and then slower. All right, so if you have a gradual, when you aim at people, it's going to slowly zoom in over time and like transition your sensitivity for more consistency. So I highly recommend that even though a lot of people do play instant. Uh, I just find instant like very inconsistent because you're going fast and then you're immediately going slow because it's instantly going to the slow sensitivity. All right, so I mean, you can keep it on instant, but highly recommend gradual because uh, it just transitions it very smoothly. Aim assist type, make sure it's on default. Some people like to try black ops. I personally do not like it, but default is a super uh, consistent right there. Automatic tax sprint. I use auto mantle. It's not mandatory, but you do move a lot faster in this game and you avoid windows in rebirth. So if you go hop over a window, you won't get stuck in it if you just mantle forward. So that's that. Um, I use slide only now. I recommend either slide only or hybrid. I've been, after the update, I've been messing up a lot with hybrid. So slide only definitely works well. But if you can do good with hybrid and you don't mess up, use that. You don't want to use tap to slide because that would make you a little bit slower. There's like a thing with that where if you press the side button, it doesn't go as fast. And boom, that's really it for, that's really it for the settings. All right, and you guys could just copy that down too if you don't really understand what I'm talking about and you wanna ask a question in the comments. All right, um, for graphics, I'm just gonna go through these. I'm not gonna explain them too much. Boop. You just want to make sure that it sets for performance instead of quality. So make sure almost everything is set to low. Um, field of view, I actually turn this up to 120 for a thumbnail, but I usually play 115. I would suggest anywhere around 115. So if you go higher, like 117, 120 is great. If you go a little bit lower, that's good too. But having it like one, like 110, 109 and a little bit lower, that is really going to reduce your field of view for rebirth because it is a smaller map and you want to make sure that you're able to see everything and everything is good like that. All right. So make sure that it's around 115, whatever you want to play for there. ADS field of view affected weapon field of view. Make sure you guys have this on wide because that's going to make your gun a little bit smaller and give you more visual or less visual recoil so that you can be able to hit your shots and then lower the camera movement in case you guys didn't have that turned off. And then for audio, I highly suggest PC speaker. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it really helps me hear footsteps a lot better than the audio, other audio, uh, other audio mixes. Uh, so that's really good right there. Highly suggest that. Try it out. If you don't like it, you can use like home theater uh, or something like that. That's what I found were the best for me. But mess with that. Make sure you hear footsteps very well. Uh, volume, you want to make sure that you have dialogue volume around the 32 range. So if you have it on like 40, 25, anywhere around there is really good. So that you're able to hear, you know, enemies spawning in or hostile UAV, whatever like that. Right. So super low, but not off. And then effects all the way up because that's like the footsteps, bullets, everything. And then voice chat, you don't want to have super high. All right, so that's uh, all the settings that you need in this game. And obviously, some people have personal preference and different beliefs and ideas of what they believe. But I just wanted to, ex to explain that you got to focus more on the aiming aspect, especially for ranked instead of the movement. Movement is important, but you need to focus on aim because you can do all the movement in the world. Um, but if you don't hit your shots, you're not going to kill these players. If you don't hit all your shots, you cannot get to Eerie. It's just not, it's not possible. All right. So now that I went through all like the settings that I use explaining that a little bit in case you guys aren't caught up with any of the settings in this game, I am going to go towards the basic fundamentals uh, in this game that you guys need to focus on so that you guys can be really good at this game. So first I'm going to talk about centering, right? So you guys, if you guys have been watching the channel, you've heard this a million times. This is the number one thing to kill anybody. And it's pretty much looking at somebody or looking at a direction where somebody could be before you see them and you pop out, aim, shoot. That's all centering is. And centering is extremely easy on lower sensitivities. This is why I play three cents, sometimes two sensitivity, because the lower you have it, the better your centering is going to be. So, oh, got right here. Boom. 
super easy the best way that you could practice centering which i've found and i do with people is go on one sense it's super low right and then practice doing it on the on the bots in the firing range all right so it's so low you can't mess up and you're going to be centering extremely well all right so practice on bots just shooting them with one sensitivity uh you can do it with like another weapon or a pistol let's do it like that's where you have really good centering right there and then um once you do that a lot, then you start moving up little by little to get to whatever sensitivity you're trying to reach. And that is going to really perfect your centering so that you're not looking at the ground all the time. You're actually more focused on the chest shots for the people, right? So focus on the chest. Make sure that you're also moving left and right, not forward and back so you don't have sprint to fire. And then boom. All right, so that's centering in this game. Extremely important thing. All you really need to do, only drill, like I said, the one sensitivity drill. All right, after I explain the centering concept, um, along with centering, you guys got to realize too that most of this game is about peeker's advantage. That's literally how you kill any single person in this game. Uh, when you're versing a really good player, usually it is whoever has the best peeker's advantage or like the most advantage over another person, that is the person who's going to win the gunfight. All right, it doesn't matter how good they are in the game. So, Peter's advantage is how fast you can get to the other side so that you can have a split window of where they can't see you because your character like didn't load in yet, right? So, if I go to this guy, boom, I have really fast Peter's advantage because he can't see me as soon as I pop out. It's going to take him a second. And on top of that, this is why centering is so crucial because if you have that split second to where you can kill him and then you aim and shoot, then he has... Uh, less time to be able to kill you so you're gonna be having a huge advantage right there all right you could also do this peeker's advantage with the slide cancel so sliding like that boom but a lot of players mess up too that that they uh they start to slide too far so they slide over here and boom they get less peeker's advantage and they get killed a lot so you want to make sure that you keep your slides sharp unless you are creating space or anything which i'm gonna talk about later all right so that is peeker's advantage and keep in mind, too, as I'm explaining all these concepts, you guys can also, um, you know, learn them from other people. So if I say, like, oh, centering, then you can learn centering from another content creator. Just search it up, how to do it, anything like that. And then you can get more information um, from other people. Next, I'm going to talk about slide canceling. So, so if you never played this game since last Rebirth, pretty much slide cancel has changed. All you do is slide jump slide jump uh i've coached some people and they said they slid and that's exactly how they did their movement they didn't know you could jump so just to clarify for everybody it is slide jump so when you slide jump you cancel your slide boom shoot bam so that's how you slide cancel in this game all right slide boom very basic drop shotting drop shotting is just holding the crouch button move to the side boom so i'm shooting at you drop shot boom you just hold the crouch button. Easy. Next, I'm going to talk about reload canceling. So reload canceling is very important because if you're shooting somebody and then you start to reload and someone else pops up, you just press the Y button twice and then you can go shoot somebody. All right. This is going to get a lot of you guys killed. So make sure that you practice this, make it a habit so that if it ever happens in game, you have that reaction speed down and then you can go and kill the person. All right. So keep in mind the reload canceling. If you don't have a habit for that right now, develop it go to the firing range shoot reload press the uh, y button twice the triangle button twice and then you're able to do it super fast like that all right so so far for you guys i covered like the very basic things um and also keep in mind that you want to make sure that all these things i talk about you want to make it a habit if it's if you're not centering really good if you're not reloading reload canceling fast enough you want to make sure that you're practicing that in the firing range and somewhere else every single day every single time you play this game you want to do it over and over and over because the more you build these habits in your mind when you get in a game you're not even thinking you're just boom 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 you're just doing all these maneuvers and that's how you get insane kills without even thinking all right next move i'm going to talk about too for people who don't know is snaking so drop shot backwards sprint upward this is how you snake in this game um it was a little different in the past rebirth but in this rebirth all you have to do is drop shot backwards sprint upward doing this multiple times does allow you to see people easier while not exposing your body when you're behind some type of wall or head glitch and then you can just pop up and shoot him and you can do it to like throw off their aim assist and not get shot all right so that's how you snake in this game drop shot backward sprint upward 
the final move that I'm going to talk about that you guys can um, practice that you really need. And I have made a video about it in the past, but it's pretty much called slide blocking. So if there's an enemy like right here, right? Pretty much what I would do is if I have a bad weapon or I just need to break their camera and they're shooting at me like crazy. And this works on like eerie players as well. It works on anybody, even really good players. What you want to do is slide cancel diagonally towards them. All right. So enemies right there. He's shooting at me. I have a pistol. Slide over here. Boom. Break his camera. Kill him. All right, it's a super simple move that you guys need to practice and get down. Because what this does is if he's aiming at me and I slide towards his character, then being that I'm so close, uh, his aim is going to be like locked in place right here. And then you can be able to shoot him easier. So if he has a better weapon and you survive the, the slide lock, you're going to be able to put more bullets into him and kill him super fast. All right, because the time to kill is very fast in this game. So if you could have a full on loadout weapon and you can only kill him with a pistol. All right, so that really gets me a lot of kills. In really good lobbies. <laughs> Alright, so all those are the most basic moves that you need to know in this game. You can find more of the videos that I've made of that in the past if you guys really want like more in-depth information about the slide lock or slide canceling or anything like that i have made a lot of videos in the past um but those are just a list of all the things that you need to have down as far as the move set to be able to get a lot of kills in this game all right now that we got the move set out of the way and you guys could just like study those moves learn how to do it um, and perfect them and make them a habit of just doing those moves over and over mastering the button combinations then we got to work on the mindset and the mental things to keep aware of right so now i'm going to talk about the basic layout of how i kill people and i call that the three stages of a gunfight pretty much what that is is each time i engage in an enemy i have three different stages of a gunfight now the first stage is the preparation stage this is extremely important because this is about gathering information all right, so I use this a lot when I, you know, I'm trying to find people and kill them in ranked resurgence. Now, with this stage, you want to always make sure that you're looking for high ground, one. And two, you want to be centering for field of view. So I mentioned centering as like aiming towards an area before somebody comes there and aiming. And that just comes with like time, repetition, and knowing obvious spots. But centering for field of view, and this is why having a high FOV is so important, is because if I look at this place over here, or maybe look over here, I can see the the right side of the map over here, I can see the middle, and I can see the left side all at the same time. I can see every single spot at the same time. So when you guys are playing Ranked Resurgence, or just Rebirth in general, then you guys are able to scan every area, see which fight is easier to take, and then go and push that angle. Alright, so it's very important that you prepare for the fight ahead of time. So, oh, I'm going over here, uh, I want to see where people are, center field of view, Boom, I see everywhere, guys over there, I go make my way towards it. And also too, I do have my slowest weapon out, so I might have my submachine gun out or a pistol out. And then I go, center field of view, if I get shot at, I could easily retreat because I have a faster weapon, and then not get shot right there. Alright, that's why a lot of times you guys see like, oh, he always finds people, like super easily, how is that? That's because I'm using my centering field of view, and using process of elimination to be like, okay, nobody's at the middle or left they must be at the right so let me start preparing for the fight on the right use my centering and then boom like easy right there so that is the preparation aspect you guys want to make sure that you understand that and make that a habit if you need to take your time you know play a regular resurgence game and be like okay i gotta focus on the preparation aspect of the three stages of a gunfight then that is really going to help you develop that habit and once you play ranked resurgence it's going to be like that like it's going to be super easy all right so make sure that you guys have that down now that you see somebody okay let's just say somebody's behind that tank all right centering field of view that they're behind the tank and i fall back now i gotta focus how am i going to get to that person and where i should go all right, and this is where I like my low sensitivity because I can move from cover to cover without any mess ups. So if I'm moving towards them, right? Okay, let me just make sure I break off his line of sight, slide cancel this way. Then maybe I can uh, slide cancel that way, figure out a place to cut off and start slowly moving towards him. And the slower your sensitivity, as long as it's not super low, you will have more organized movement. So each time you slide, you're more going in a straight line towards the building and not being like, oh, I'm at high sensitivity. I like go slide this way and then go this way. 
and then I go over here and like slide in a weird direction. You want to make sure that each movement you make is super straightforward and timed. Because the more you have organized movement and timed movement, that is going to give you a huge advantage towards when you are going to kill a person. Next, you should also make sure that you're either looking for high ground or head glitches. So, so first I say to myself, okay, is there high ground here? No, there's no high ground. Okay, is there head glitches here? No, there's no head glitches. Then my instinct is to go for peeker's advantage, right? So first I see the guy. I'm going to go back to the preparation stage. Okay, I see the guy here. Okay, do I have high ground? I do, but he's too far away. All right, next, are there any head glitches? Maybe there's a head glitch right there. So what I'm going to do is, okay, I see him, back away. I'm going to go to that head glitch all the way over here. Go to the head glitch, bam, I see him. Oh, he, rot he rotated in the building, all right? Okay, I'm going to push up. I'm going to push up, get behind here, and then I'm going to start making my way towards him. Uh, I hear him a little bit over there. Then I use the peeker's advantage to go slide cancel, shoot, right? So that whole mental aspect is just high ground, head glitch, peeker's advantage. That's what I do to make sure that I'm following the exact uh, pattern to be able to kill somebody with the best advantage possible. A lot of you guys see people when you go up towards them, but you're not having the best advantage possible, and then they're in like some crazy head glitch or something. They're using like one of the advantages against you, and then you die right there. All right, so make that a habit that as soon as you see somebody, okay, go through the checklist, high ground, head glitch, and then peeker's advantage, and then, okay, I'm going to go and kill him now and make sure that I have those checked off. All right, so make that a habit, guys. Preparation stage, look for people with the centering. Then you slide into the engagement stage where you're like, okay, let me hit the checklist for high ground, um, head glitch, and then peeker's advantage. And then you learn how to kill them. Just, just right there using your moves. And then the final stage, right? The third stage of a gunfight. Let's just say I kill this person. Okay, I slide in. Boom. Right here, he hits me a bit and I'm out of shield. Now, you got to think, what is going to set you up for being healed for the next gunfight, right? So you got to focus on reloading. You got to focus on healing. And if you die right here, let's just say you have to reload and somebody goes out and kills you. You still did most of the stuff right. Your preparation stage was amazing. Your engagement stage was amazing. And then you just failed on like the recovery part, the third stage of a gunfight. Then you know, okay, my issue is not killing the person. My issue is I die because I try to get out of it and somebody kills me. All right, so um, you probably heard this from other people before, but you want to make sure that most of the time, 90% of the time, you are reloading before you heal. All right, so reload before you heal, because if you reload, and let's just say um, you have to heal, but somebody just pops up in front of you, you're going to have a chance to kill him if you have bullets in your gun versus if you have shield on. Obviously, you have a, a higher chance of killing him if you have plates on, but at least you can kill him. At least there's somewhat of a chance right there. All right, so that is really going to help you there. Make sure you reload before you heal. Do not try to engage other people or take stupid fights while you're still healing. And that should be able to help you with that portion. All right. So as far as the mental aspect, hope this, you know, at least broadens your understanding of what your mind should be while you're looking for people. And that's going to help you get uh, a lot better structure in this game so that you're able to kill people a lot easier. All right. Next, I'm going to talk about momentum. So this is very important for finding people and making sure that you also don't get shot in the back. So in this game, the fastest ways to actually move is tactical sprint. And then a slide cancel. These boost your movement forward. Whereas if you're just running in a straight line, even with tag sprint, it's like it's stagnant as far as your speed. And then And if you just do regular slides, yeah, you boost forward like a little bit, but it's still the same speed. So what I do to help like shift the momentum forward and get me like the best speed possible is as soon as I move up, I jump. As soon as I touch the ground, I slide. So it's like jump, slide jump slide jump slide and then i keep my momentum as i'm moving around the map all right so it's like okay jump over here jump slide down here because the more you go down places the faster you go it's like jump slide over here jump slide over here jump slide over here and those jump slides is going to help uh keep your momentum forward and the main things that you guys want to avoid is any type of long animation like this all right, so if I wanted to climb up here, I'll go short and then and then climb up like that. 
All right, so instead of doing two long animations, I'll go the shorter side, shorter side like this, and then a long animation. All right, so the more you cut that out, the faster you'll be in this game to help keep your momentum and be able to dodge people or run away from people, to run towards people and catch up to them. That's really going to help you out right there. All right, so that is the momentum aspect. Just make sure that you're generating enough speed and keeping that speed around the map to make sure that you are able to have really fast speed overall. All right, next I'm gonna talk about baiting players. So there's two types of baiting that I tell people in this game. There's an audio bait and a visual bait. Uh, a visual bait is pretty much just showing your body and then immediately going away so that they're like, okay, there's an enemy over there. And while you're baiting players, your goal is to focus their attention in one area and go in a different area. So if I bait a guy right here, right? Let's just say I go, Oh, I baited him and I go behind this head glitch or I, I jumped there, go behind this head glitch. Now he's pre-aiming that, but then I can pop up here. I have cover. Boom. I can shoot him. All right. So the best way to do this visual bait is just slide cancel out. And as soon as you go out, go back in. So boom, boom. And you can use this to like see him with your peripheral vision, but you don't want to shoot him because if you shoot him, He'll just kill you. All right, so visual bait like that, and then it can go in a different direction or do whatever after that. But that is one form of bait. Another form of bait um, is, let's just say doors. So if you bust open a door over here and then go around, you baited him with noise. If you ever shoot, so if you don't know where the last team is, for example, and you shoot, and then you go in a different direction after that, then you're going to attract enemies to go over there, and then you can pop up and be in a different spot to be able to see them. All right, so audio baiting and visual baiting. You guys want to keep that in mind when you are versing really good players. And on top of that, just to give you guys a tip in this game as well, um, most good players like Crimson players, even Diamond players, they always do the visual bait where right they, they slide cancel out, maybe shoot a little bit, go back in, and then jump out. Always do that. So if you guys are on this end, if you see him, you're shooting at him, and he runs that way, you can just keep shooting keep shooting or maybe jump this way to cut them off and shoot like that like always expect for them to jump backwards because they usually challenge a lot when you're versing really good players because they already know visual baiting they already know what that is so the way to counter it is just predict it all the time all right so that is baiting in this game next i'm going to talk about off angles so off angles is pretty much any spot that is not obvious to the average person that you can use to get a surprise factor on a person. So if I hear somebody coming in here and he wants to go over here, maybe I'll just hide right here. Because if I'm right here and he comes in and it's a, it's a really good player, I don't have a good gun in Rebirth, then boom, I could just kill him right there, surprise him like that instead of being, I don't know, it's like waiting right here or something, right? You want to use off angle, boom. So there are a lot of spots like that in Rebirth that you want to use off angles in case you have a really bad position and you have to hold that place down for some reason, right? So keep that in mind as well. Now, so far, I know this video is very long, but with all the things I said, if you have to go back to this video every single day and just like rehearse that stuff in your mind over and over and really like solidify it, you're going to become a lot better player in this game. This game is all about knowing the right things to do and then rehearsing it every single day over and over and over. You built in the three stages of a gunfight. You mastered your centering or you know how to reload cancel so that in case that ever happens, boom, you could do that and not die from that, right? So you want to master all those things that I just talked about. And those are like at least the base things that you need to be, you know, an eerie player. Like if you don't know how to drop shot bunny hop or something, right? That some people know how to pull off but you at least know how to have really good peekers advantage and stuff like that you can still hit eerie right it's not it's not impossible you don't need to know everything in the game but all the stuff i just talked about is like mandatory like you need to make sure you learn that rehearse that every single day and you do not forget those all right very very important so now that we cover like the the basics and the mental part and everything I am going to start going into the Reaper side, how you guys can get uh, high kills in this game. And then I'm going to shift that into actually playing ranked. All right. Because there's two different sides to Rebirth. There's getting really high kills in like public matches. And then there's the ranked version. And I do think it is a lot easier if you understand how to get really high kills and then transition that into the ranked version. 
All right, so right here, I'm going to pull up a gameplay where I dropped 49 kills. All right, so insane. I was going absolutely crazy. And this is also going to be some of the spots that you guys should land when you're playing Ranked Resurgence. So I personally land right here every single time. It's my favorite spot because you want to focus on having really tight corners and spaces around here. So me, if I get shot in the back here, I can run in here. I can go around. I can use this as cover. Uh, there's a lot of spots where I can maneuver around here, and that's really going to get me a lot of kills in this game and not get shot. All right. And then also, too, as I mentioned, I have auto mantle on, right? Look how fast I climbed this, right? I didn't press jump once. Climb, boom, boom. I'm able to, like, really smoothly get up all the way around there. So that's why I have auto mantle on. really helps me out. All right. My main focus here is I'm just using these walls as cover while I'm looting. And that's going to be very important in ranked because in ranked, everyone wants to shoot at you and get, like, taps and stuff. And then, boom. All right, so I get the first kill right here, right? And this is also something you guys need to know. As I said, I've mastered every single good habit in this game about, like, fundamentals and things like that. So I have slide canceling down to a pack. My movement is very organized. And I know that usually people are in the basement area. So right here... I go, perfect slide cancel, and I'm looking around while I'm centering. All right, maybe my aim was a little bit off just because I was going in the downward movement, but boom, center right there, shot, bam. I wouldn't be able to hit that as clean if I wasn't a high sensitivity, so that's why I also suggest that you go super lower. And then also, too, most of the time you guys want to finish your kills. You don't want to be downing somebody and then not finishing them because when you finish them, Boom, they pop up on the radar wherever his teammates are, and that gives you an idea of where the enemy is, right? So if you guys were ever confused about that, make sure that you finish every single kill. Unless, obviously, like, it's the final team and you need a win. But 90% of the time, you want to finish your kills. Like, boom, downed him, finished him, boom. All right? Kill this guy here. And then, so, like I said before, too, right? Of how I said the preparation stage. So right here, I'm like, okay, I know people are over here because there's a mortar. I'm using my centering field of view. So I can see over here. I can see here. I can see down here-ish. Right? So centering field of view. Nobody's there. Go to this door. I didn't know this guy was right there. And then boom. I can kill him right there. And then I'm not pushing upwards because high ground is the advantage. So if I push upwards... They're going to kill me. So instead, I start pushing downwards. I scaled this the floor, like this floor right here, so no one was there. So I decided to push all the way down. So, yep, just killing these people right here. And then a lot of it um, also, too, as well, once you get your centering down, uh, I did want to say this, you just... You just go from like spot to spot to spot to spot. And that's how I get like a lot of kills in this game. So guys, master centering. Because like right there, I just, boom. Center right there. I'm centering over here. And then a guy pops up there. Because the stairs is a common spot. So the repetition and habits, extremely important. Right? So I'm going to go through this a little bit more. And then I'll just skip to a, a more important part so you guys can understand more about this game. All right, another important part I want to put right here. Look how I turn this corner, right? So I kill this guy. I get this weapon. I shoot him. Boom. He's almost dead. And then look. Look what I do right here. Centering. Centering field of view. If I look in this direction, I can see a little bit of the stairs over here, over there. So I still do it while I'm looking for people. Not there. Not there. Nobody's there. Bam. He just happened to be there. And then, guys, look what I just talked about, right? Earlier in the video, this is why you have to master this thing down. The reload canceling, right? So here, I reloaded. He pops up there. Canceled it. I'm telling you, like, this stuff happens. If I swap to the other weapon, it might not have been as good. Um... Yeah, it might not have been as good, or maybe I would have not swapped in time and he would have killed me. So, 
everything that I just talked about earlier in this video, like this is just all tying in together now. Like, you can see it in action right now. All right, so boom. Develop those habits, man. And then, uh, so here. Boom. Okay, I'm also going to explain this situation right here. So there are going to be times where we have to choose two different fights to pick. Now, you guys, what fight do you think I'm going to pick right here? Am I going to slide cancel this way and fight this guy up top? Or am I going to push this guy at the bottom? What do you think? The answer is the guy at the bottom. Mainly because top has high ground. Like I said, high ground's very important. He has the advantage. So push this guy right here. This guy's most likely going to go downstairs. And then I can slide cancel, push him right there. You see how I'm already thinking about this in my mind before it even happens? And that is because you develop the habits of doing good things over and over. And you become a lot better at this game. So boom, kill him right there. Oh, a guy just pops up over here. Kill him really fast. And then I didn't decide to push him because... The guy just surprised me, like the second guy. So, so I'm like, all right, let me heal real quick, and then I can push the guy. Maybe he's coming down. Oh, he did come down. Fighting someone else. Bam. Oh, accidentally mantled there. All right, so. Boom, boom, boom. And you can see like right there, like I, I started up top. I went all the way up top because I knew nobody was there. And then I started working my way uh, to the bottom so that I can get the high ground of the, the other people. So you can see, right? Like I know this video is kind of getting a little repetitive. I'm saying the same things over and over. Like high ground, high ground. And, and oh, peaker's advantage and all this stuff, right? But it's important that you know how this all ties in together with the same thing. Because you guys really have to... Again, like I'm saying, you really have to master the fundamentals first in order to be playing this game. And also, just watch your watch your videos over and over. Like, record. Like, watch the, the gameplay that you guys got. Whether it was, like, 12 kills, 8 kills, 15 kills, 20 kills. And look at yourself. Am I centering really good? Did I reload cancel onto that person? like is that what got me killed because i didn't do it in time am i getting high ground over people and the more you analyze your own gameplay that's going to get you really good because you know which mistakes that you're making all right now a little bit for uh some people ask me in the comments they're like fifth seal like how do you know where to go all the time like your pacing is really good well like I said, like first I start in a super close space so that I can have a lot of movement to get out of situations. And then next I go to wherever people are shooting at or I can get a UAV or I just know most common spots. So prison, control, factory, headquarters, like that whole area. I'm always like I'm always around there because usually that's where people are. And if I really can't find people or if I don't know if someone's going to destroy me, get money for a UAV, spam it. All right, so that's what I would say about finding people and not getting shot. Bam. And then what? Guy over here. Bam. Centering is really good. So you guys could see all this stuff for the same thing. Now, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Maybe I'll go to this part, right? I'll explain like this clip right here. All right, so I'm going to explain how I got this or well, how I got this team wipe right here. So I'm just going to show a little bit. Go over there. And then above me. So I'm gonna explain this whole kill, uh, all these kills right here, so that you guys can replicate this news for yourself. So first, I started off at top of factory, then I went down under here because I'm using the high ground to be able to get the advantage over other people. I know people were in this area, but I don't see them yet. I don't go down here because I want the high ground, so I went upward. 
Go over here. Okay, I'm centering onto this area because this is the most common spot people like to hide on, like the stairs to head glitch it. Found a guy right there. Didn't give up my high ground. And then swapped weapons so that I can get a faster ADS time to shoot this person. Boom. And as soon as I killed him, I looked immediately on the minimap. This guy's up in the sky, so he's not going to be a threat uh, yet. This guy's on the grounds, and he's already down, so I don't have to worry about him. So I reload. Start looking for the next guy. I don't see him, but I do see somebody over there, just AFK. And then I hear somebody on the roof. So I know he has a pistol. Immediately turn around. Bam. And you do not need a high sense to be able to 180 like that. I'm on three cents. And I did it really fine. All right. There's no point of 180ing super fast if you're going to miss all your shots. So that's that. Boom. Let me skip over here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to talk about the personal skill that you guys need to develop to actually having gas plays. All right. So I'm going to go over here. I had a really good gas play uh, right here. And the thing you guys want to keep in mind, too, is you guys got to suppress your urge to just get out of the gas so fast and not die. All right. The game isn't over, you know, if you have no plates. The game is over when you have no health. All right. So here, let me go back to right here. So in this situation, I'm just going gonna, gonna to turn the audio on a little bit so you guys can hear uh, this part. Where was it? Right, so kill the guy right there. I know those people were there because I could just hear them. Kill this guy. And here is where I start entering the gas. So I hit him, and there's a guy right here. And I have quick fix. I highly recommend everybody use quick fix for this reason. So as soon as I down somebody, my health regens. Down him right here, and... I see too, like as soon as I down him, being that my fundamentals and my aim in this game is so good, as soon as I downed him, I don't have to worry about, okay, let me just look somewhere else or make sure that I'm centered onto the next guy. I can center for the next guy and get behind cover all while looking at the mini map at the same time. So as soon as I'm downing him right here, I'm not even looking at his body. I'm looking at the mini map. I see guys are over there. So I heal real quick and run backwards because I need to reload my weapon. Slide over here because I know he's coming. Because I have no other option. And then right here, I'm just killing these people because I want to regen my uh, health. So I'm about to die. And instead of saying, oh, I got, I'm about to die. Let me go back to the circle. No, I'm just killing the down players so that I can regen. And I just see that guy there regen and I'm still not going in the I'm still not going in the circle yet Why because reloading is way important than healing, right? So I'm gonna reload here Boom nobody's over there. I'm using right here. I'm kind of using a little bit of the bait, but the centering field of view, right? look Boom see I can see that whole area while going back so I don't get shot and I'm doing that all while having no plays. So, really works. But then I end up do getting shot. So, I, I guess I baited him successfully. And then I just decide to, like, slide. Peeker's advantage. Because I'm so fast that even if he sees me, he won't kill me in time. And he doesn't. Boom. And then over here, I know that, like, there's too many people there. So, I played a little bit, like, careful. Auto mantle to get up super fast. I mainly shoot that because of the gas, because I want to regen my health. If there was no gas, I would have played that like slower and smarter, but I have no other options here. So I gotta take them out. Boom. Get my health back. And then bam. Yo, 
One thing I will say too about this part, right? This is a uh, very important when you're versing really good players is you want to be super mobile because Peeker's advantage is so good in this game that if you stand still and you're holding angles, you're going to die and you're not going to be able to see as many people as possible and find out where they are. So like in this part, right? So this part right here, I'm super mobile. I down him. And as soon as I down him too, like uh, I'm going to go back a tiny bit. As soon as I downed him, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I shot, right? So, it's going to go back a little bit. I was like, okay, I shot my weapon. They know I'm here on the minimap. So, I have to move as far away from the spot as possible. I do that. Guys right here. Boom. I move as far away from that spot as possible. And I'm going back. And it's a good thing I moved far away from that spot because this spot went up. This guy went up to that spot, so I would have been dead, right? So, be mobile. That's another tip as well. Always be mobile. Yup, down me. Medic vests are extremely important for fast selves. I downed him. I tried to go to uh, a different spot to be able to like get away from that. I saw somebody had to go back, and then this just plays out. All right. So I wanted to show you like a. Uh, an example of you know the, the really high kill game that i just dropped i wanted to go through that and explain it because i just posted it right i didn't actually go in depth and explain like all the habits and stuff that i actually do to be good at this game and i just wanted this to be like a whole thing that you guys can understand so that you guys know like the mindset that what i'm using in this game all right so so far we went through the basics you know the mental things that you need to know uh I demonstrated a gameplay of where I had really high kill games and like some of like the things I use like you know having short corners and stuff when you land um, going from high ground to low ground onto places and things like that so that's what I really use for high kill games and now finally like once we got all that stuff we're going to move into the section where we're going to talk about specifically ranked resurgence I'm going to say this right now uh, I probably can't get past diamond without a team. You guys need a team in this game because if you play solo, yeah, you could be extremely good and hold your ground, but you're getting like random, you're getting random teammates. You can get horrible teammates, which I usually get, and they just uncoordinated and they don't, they don't get a lot of kills because the more kills your team gets, the more you get because you get points for assists, right? Or uh, kills by squad mate and things like that. So don't touch this unless you have a team go find a team join a discord that has people who want to play and stuff like that and just make sure you have people to hit iridescent so that's number one so right here right i'm with my team um i'm gonna be going through this uh ranked game that i had all right so we decided to land factory that's what uh my teammate wanted and also too it is very important that you guys cooperate with your teammates if you want to go headquarters or control and they want to go factory it's better to just listen to them than to fight like a bad plan is better than no plan for the <laughs> for the most part right if you guys are disagreeing with each other um if you have to leave your teammate because they just like their plans are just super horrible that's fine um but it is better to just be super coordinated because the more you guys are sticking together and you guys all, all have really good skill in this game, that is going to increase your chances of surviving and, you know, sharing kills to get the most SR possible. All right. So we all land here. Enemy lands here. I get the gun first. And then also, too, like, uh, what you want to focus on, too, while you're landing into wherever you're landing into, um... You want to make sure that you guys get enough money to get a loadout as fast as possible. Now, that might not always be the case. Maybe it's like sometimes people are on the loadout and you can't do too much. Uh, but that's usually what me and my team focus on. Because if you have a loadout, you have your loadout guns, then you can start pushing people. Right? So, only one guy landed here. And then uh, we just shot at him a bit. He was too far away. So, I just decided, okay, let's loot. We got to loot something. All right. So sometimes pushing people from the start could be a bad thing 
Uh, mainly because if you keep pushing people with bad weapons, then you're going to run into one team or multiple teams where they have really good weapons or the loadout weapons, and then you get destroyed like that. So I usually focus a lot, mainly in ranked, on the loadout rather than just racking up kills. Alright, so I'm with my teammate here. I'm splitting up a little bit from him just because I want to get as much money as possible. We almost have enough. I hear somebody in this direction, but I don't know where he's at. I see that he's up here. And then I just know that I have an amazing weapon, so I just challenge him. Boom. And if I died there, let's just say I died or there was a whole team shooting at me, that's not a, bi uh, a big issue because I still have like negative ADSR. So if you die like really early, totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you start dying like mid game or late game, then you're going to lose a lot of SR. So not good. So dying in. In the beginning of the game, that's great. Like, well, not great, but like, <laughs> that there's no, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have to be risky to to get your stuff, just just make sure that the whole team doesn't die. Boom. So so we have enough, and then obviously, oh, we gotta focus on getting the loadout. Uh, so we get the loadout, get it as fast as we can. Boom. And then as soon as you get the loadout, right, for wherever you are, whether it's factory or headquarters prison where wherever the buy station is you get the loadout immediately regroup as a team and just start pushing people you want every single person to push the same spot you do not want to split so boom like we're all in the same spot like not moving at all all sticking with each other i see he's going over there so I'm gonna start just making sure I don't go too far away, and then I follow work right here. Probably would have been better if like we we all went with him, or if he stayed down. Cause he's there. The PA is gonna mess. Babe, like I mentioned, it's. I don't know. I don't know why I did this. I think I was just super kill hungry. I was probably just super kill hungry, and I I didn't really care. But I pushed a guy. In ranked from the bottom position so you can see i did a dumb move right here i pushed him when he had the high ground i should have just took like the zip line or something and then got me killed just because i wanted to like uh just because i wanted to like avenge him or whatever right it was just not smart so when you go one by one and you split up that is where you're gonna have the most deaths right that's when you're gonna lose the most sr and things like that so you really gotta be coordinated with your team and then I regroup with them. So they just kept dying to the people on the roof. I took a new route to take the high ground over them. So overall, um, I think, yeah, we start off factory. Then we start rotating towards, what, prison? Factory, prison. And then we ended the game in prison. And we got we got fourth place that game at 114 SR. Uh, nothing too crazy, but it was, it was a good game. Like, it was good. And uh, the whole time... The whole time, like I said, we're together. I think that's like the number one thing I would say in rank that you got to make sure you're doing with your teammates. If everybody's together, you you don't. It, it's really hard to lose in this game, right? So another situation where we're together, they choose those sides. Guys over here, there's like two different teams that are all fighting against each other. I'm trying to show support for him by throwing a grenade there. I heal. And then he just jumps in to like distract them. So he's like, I guess he's a form of a visual bait because like he jumps in, they go, they shoot each other. I come from behind. We're taking them at different angles. Boom. Wish I had a uh, more ammo in there. Boom. And then look. Okay. So look at this play. This is what you guys. Um, need to focus on as well if you have like a set team and you guys are working together to get eerie um the more you like switch locations and you go in different directions the more the enemy has to aim so in this spot right you could see that uh work went in first so he was like all right let me i'm just gonna rush inside and this is not something that i coordinate with my team i'm not i'm not like all right guys let's run this play work's gonna go first if you're just gonna go the other side you gotta in your mind you gotta think okay well if my teammate's doing this what can i do to put me in the best position to help him out 
right? So right here, he's running forward, and I'm gonna tail right behind him. So as I tail behind him, I know that he's like the bait, and he's gonna take on most of the people. I'm gonna take a spot from behind to kind of like not get shot with him. And then fear, what he's doing is he's like, okay, well they're both over here. What I'm gonna do is go for the go from the roof while they're distracting them, and I'm gonna shoot him from behind. All right? So, boom. He's on that side. I'm on this side. We're shooting. He gets down. I throw a grenade. He sees the grenade. He goes back up. And then he's on the roof. And he takes him out. And I did not know there was a guy there. And then boom. I'm now at like plus 30 SR there. So, um... On top of that, too, I think the, the worst ways that you guys can play Ranked Resurgence is if you're all sitting in one spot and not doing anything. Um, or if you're, if you're not approaching teams from different angles. If you're too predictable, if, you know, if the enemy knows where you're at all the time, you're just not, you're not going to do anything. With that, is he's gone? You have it? You want me to drop it now? <laughs> this thing is crazy, right? Yeah. This thing shoots the straight as hell, too. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, let me get a tab. Alright, so let me go to where we died. There's a couple. Boop, 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 boop. Let's stay together here. We said just got disabled. Alright, so this is the portion where we died. I'm gonna watch this real quick. Oh, me and Sue can kill these kids with our with our Uh, they were like, yeah, they were the old. I didn't know they were that. So boom. All right, now I'm gonna bring this part right where uh, fear died right here. And then uh, work try to go around, but I'm gonna bring this part to one of the basic fundamentals here, right? So he ran out, fear. He ran out and then immediately got shot. And this comes to this comes down to the preparation stage, right? So we don't know if people are over there. We got to start using our centering field of view. We got to maybe like visual baits out and in to make sure nobody's there. And being that like I really couldn't take advantage of that situation because I didn't go out first to prevent his death. Um, that's really what got him caught yeah, him off guard right there. So boom, again. He's like, we can kill these two kids. So what he's doing is he knows people are up there. So instead of just checking this side, um, like like inside here, he decides to go around there to check that side too. But he fails to check this side over there that they might be in. So boom. And I'm stunned. And then like that. And then also too, what did I say, guys? high ground then head glitch so obviously we don't have high ground because there's no other high ground i was in a head glitch on the stairs and if i wasn't in that head glitch i would have died right there nah dude there, there's three there's three just sitting there bro i didn't know that they're just they're, they're pushing they're just they're right there they're pushing they're on the staircase right now see no more second chance yeah just run, just run. so there um it's probably not smart to just like fight a bunch of people, right? But I saw it was one guy, and guess what? I had the high ground, so able to get that kill right there. You know, Marty, Marty. That shit's crazy. Got me some points. This shit is crazy. Have fun. Here, guy behind me. He has the high ground right here, so that could have been bad. But look, I'm going to explain why I challenged this guy. All right, so um, I opened this door right here. And the reason why I challenged him is not because, oh, I just want to get a kill, right? Even though he has the high ground. No, I did a vi uh, I did an audio beat, right? So he saw me run in that direction and he heard the door open. So he's like, okay, I'm safe to keep going down. And then boop, he aims in that direction to check there because he knows I'm running over here. Boom, doesn't get me. So that door was a form of audio bait that worked right there. Head glitch over here. Nope, I can't do that. Like and then nice I'm gonna retreat. I also want to explain this portion to you guys as well. So uh, this guy, right? This uh, this next guy that I shoot over here. So I hear somebody come over here, right? 
boom here when I get shot I shoot in a little bit what did I say earlier in this video I know it's a really long video but what did I say earlier in this video usually people go in they shoot you come out and then immediately rechallenge because that's what good players do so look he he shot me comes out I wait for him go in boom being that I waited for him I broke his arm right there now I'm going to go in a different position because he knows, okay, he waited for me that time. He's probably still going to wait for me. So challenge different position with the head glitch. Nope. Uh, I give it a few seconds because if he found out that I'm there, then he could probably kill me right there. So he healed. And then I'm just like, I'm not going to fight that. I'm just not going to fight that entirely because I want to value my life. So I go back down here and then chill in there so circle closes. So, bam, and then I ended up dying. Let's see how I died right here. I have a mine down there. I'm just holding this angle. It sucks because it's, it's like 1v3, right? So, I can't do too much down right here. I will say what sucks is in this video, I was, you know, this is one sense optional game. I was playing on one sensitivity of the game. All right. So, I was doing it for a challenge. I was doing it in ranked. But this just goes to show, guys, like, it's all about aim. I was playing on one sensitivity, and I ended up getting, how much SR? I got set plus 7. 114 SR in a Crimson Lobby on one sensitivity. So, focus on aim. But, uh, yeah, I couldn't really move there because it was too low. That's why I played 3, not 1. Uh, but down there right there, I could have ran away and then re-challenged. Or something like that. But it was just a bad spot. But yeah, I wanted to like show that game and review it a little bit to demonstrate overall like what like the average process is for me um, when I'm going through a ranked game like that. So overall, after showing you that game, um, I do want to say that every single thing in this game is a process that you just got to make a habit. So I talked about the, the fundamentals and like the mental thing, like having all that as a habit, developing that over time. And then for ranked, it's the same thing, but you're developing like, okay, we're going to land in a good spot. Um, if there's a team, I'll push it together. If not, do this. And then as you're doing that, uh, we got to focus on getting a loadout. We got the loadout. Now let's get a UAV. We got the UAV. Okay, let's push from this angle to push the high ground, right? So every single thing just comes together. It's like there's things you should do. There's things you shouldn't do. And if you just focus on the good things over and over and over and build those habits, then you will be extremely good at this game all right i'm gonna say that process one more time in, in case you guys didn't understand that for uh ranked so for ranked you drop down in a spot that has uh a lot of close corners right so that's the first thing second is you try to get money for a loadout all right if people are in the way make sure you have like the the high ground for that but you want to get a loadout you get the loadout uav you got the uav then boom you can go find people as you're going to find people you want to make sure that you have high ground so prison is an amazing spot for that because you can get on the roof or make sure that you even the playing field with the floors um and then once like that's all set and you start pushing end game then you can just focus on waiting for other teams to die and then third party and just like that all right but all these concepts just come together so that it's like a more smooth game that you don't even have to think about when i play ranked I don't even think about what I'm doing. I just I just play the game, right? I'm just like, okay, press start. Oh, I got 200 SR, like that. Because all of this stuff, like playing over and over of just ranked or rebirth or studying basic fundamentals, all of that is like ingrained in my mind. And I can just be so good at this game, right? So I really hope this video helps you out. I really tried my best to record this much so that... Um, I can make sure a lot of you guys who never touched Rebirth in such a long time, you guys can make sure you have every single fundamental in this game that you can practice and get a lot better. So I hope this helps. And uh, yeah, you guys have an amazing rest of your day.